All right, so we've got... A ton of updates from the International Coaching Federation, wow. the ICF. <laughs> yeah, you sent us a whole stack of their latest stuff on credentialing. Right. Yeah. Whether you're a coach yourself or you're thinking about maybe getting into coaching or honestly, you're just curious about what goes on in this world. Mm -hmm. We're going to try to pull out the need to know stuff here. Yeah. I think what's so interesting about looking at all of these updates kind of in one batch is how much it shows the ICF reacting to the fact that coaching is changing so fast. Right. You know, it's not just about like bureaucratic paperwork. It's about them really trying to make sure that as coaching grows, it stays credible and people trust it. And you hit the nail on the head with that trusted part yeah. because one of the documents actually uses that language. Oh, really? It literally says clients see those ICF credentials as a demonstration of quality, integrity, and legitimacy. Mm -hmm. like, it makes you realize this isn't just some internal ICF thing. This actually affects how coaches are perceived. Absolutely. And I think the timeline and some of these changes is also important for your listeners to have in mind, because some of this is stuff that's already happened. Some right. of it is right around the corner and some huh. of it's going to be rolling out over time. OK, that is a really good point. So let's do this for anybody who is like about to take the ACC exam. Yeah. The Associate Certified Coach exam. It's big news. Big news. Getting a pretty big revamp this November. It is. They are really changing things up. So instead of that longer format with the different sections that maybe some people were expecting mm -hmm. it's going to be a 90 minute multiple choice exam okay and it's really going to focus on those core competency that foundational knowledge base so maybe a little less nerve-wracking for those who oh, don't love essay questions oh, right, right right you know knowing the icf it's still going to be tough oh absolutely it will be rigorous i mean they're serious about this stuff but right. one thing i did notice is that they are now including a 10 minute break in the middle of the exam which i think is actually really nice that is a good call a little mental reset yeah because you know you get in there and you're trying to prove yourself totally and it's good to have a minute and speaking of proving yourself the way that you renew those credentials is changing too Oh, interesting. Like what caught my eye is you can earn credits towards renewal by being involved in the ICF community. Oh, wow. Like volunteering, serving on boards, things like that. That's a really interesting way to encourage people to give back. To be more part of the profession than just their client work. I like that a lot. It seems like they're also... Recognizing that life happens because there's a new extenuating circumstances policy for renewals too. Okay. A little bit of compassion. Yeah. But okay... For those who are already credentialed and thinking about leveling up, <laughs> they made it easier to upgrade. They did. It used to be that you had to both renew your current credential and apply separately for the higher level. Oh, God. Which meant twice the paperwork, twice the fees. Now it's one streamlined process. Oh, that's good. Which I'm sure people appreciate. Yeah, efficiency is key. Right. And it seems like they're getting that message because even for the main credentialing exam. They've made some tweaks. They have. Based on feedback from people who have actually taken it. Oh, interesting. Like fewer questions, a longer break. Okay. More detailed feedback if you need to retake it. All good stuff. I love that they're actually listening to the people who are going through this process. And making changes based on it. Yeah. That's yeah. huge. Speaking of listening to people. We have to talk about these team coaching certifications. Okay. Yeah. You That's know, ACTC. Right. Advanced Certification and Team Coaching. If you want the official acronym, mm -hmm. are they saying team coaching is like the next big thing? Yeah, it's definitely. I mean, it's a significant move, right? Yeah. Because they're not only launching the ACTC, they're also launching this accreditation program for team coaching program. Oh, right, right, right. The AATC. Okay. So they're really setting a standard here for this whole area of coaching. Mm, that's been, I mean, it's been growing so rapidly. Yeah. Does this mean individual coaching is out the window? Or is there still room for both? That's such a good question. I, I think. It's interesting because on the one hand, yes, team coaching is definitely having a moment. Right. But the thing is, individual coaching is not going anywhere. Okay. And in fact, the ICF's focus on core competencies in this new ACC exam that we were just talking about mm -hmm. really highlights that because... They're basically saying, listen, no matter what your coaching niche is... Right. Those foundational skills, active listening, building rapport, powerful questioning. Yeah. Those are essential. Okay. You've got to have that strong foundation no matter what. So it's like learn the basics. And then you can specialize. Exactly. I love that approach. Although team coaching, I mean, that just seems like a whole different 
beast. It is a different skill set, right? Because it's not just about working with one person's goals and their values and their, you know. Internal world. You've got a whole group dynamic. Whole group? You've got team dynamics. You've got to navigate different personalities. Oh, my gosh. You've got to understand things like conflict resolution. Collaborative decision making. Facilitating a shared vision. So are they kind of nudging coaches to be more like organizational consultants almost. You know, it's interesting you say that because I think there's definitely a trend towards this more holistic approach. Okay. And when you combine that with this focus on community engagement. For credential renewal, it really feels like they're saying we want coaches to be thought leaders. Okay. We want them contributing to the profession. So you can't just be good at coaching one-on-one. You have to be out there sharing what you know, contributing to the field as a whole. It's about it's about that constant learning and sharing and evolving. And speaking of things that are constantly evolving, they've made some pretty big changes to their applications yeah. because of all this data privacy stuff. Right. GDPR, the general data protection regulation. Yeah. For anybody who's not familiar with that. Yeah. That's a big deal, especially for something like coaching. Huge deal. Where trust and confidentiality are like. The whole thing. Paramount. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It really is. And, you know, it's good to see them taking it seriously because... Is that a joke? Oh, no. It's a big deal. (laughs) But no more coaching logs, right? Mm -hmm. So how are they going to, like... Check that you've actually done the coaching hours. Right. That's a great question, and it shows how they're trying to... Balance all these different factors. So basically... You now attest to your experience, but they've got this system of random audits to make sure people are being truthful. So it's like... They trust you, but they're also going to verify. Right, exactly. It's a way to protect everybody involved. Okay, so with all of this stuff pointing to, you know, more specialization... Is there even such a thing as a generalist coach anymore? Or do you have to pick your niche? That that is the question, isn't it? It's interesting because while all this is happening and we're talking about specialization and all that... Right. They're also really hammering home the importance of that strong foundation. Okay. Remember how we were talking about that new ACC exam and those core competencies? Right. It's like they're saying, listen... Those fundamental coaching skills? Yeah. Those will always be valuable. So you're saying don't... Don't skip the basics. Don't skip the basics. You've got to have that solid base to build on no matter what direction you go in. It's like they're saying learn the rules before you break them. Exactly. You know, active listening, building rapport, asking those powerful questions. Those are the skills that go beyond any specific niche or any industry or anything. Right. That's the heart of coaching. So as we're all all these changes, what does this actually mean for somebody who's listening to this? That's what I want to know. Right. Like, what does it mean for someone on their own coaching journey? Yeah. I think what it tells us is that coaching as a profession is really growing up. Okay. It's becoming more sophisticated. It's getting more specialized. It's becoming more ethical. It's really becoming more integrated into the fabric of, you know, organizations and society as a whole. Yeah. No, I think you're right. And it seems like it's going to keep changing. Oh, I'm sure it will. (laughs) That's the one thing we can count on. (laughs) So whether you are a coach. Or you're just thinking about it. I think the main takeaway here. Never stop learning. Never stop learning. Never stop asking questions. And never underestimate those fundamentals. I love it. Well, on that note, I think we'll wrap up this deep dive into the wild world of ICF credentialing. Hope this has helped you make sense of some of this stuff. And we'll see you next time.